Hello and welcome to the Fighting Spirit Podcast. As always, I'm Jason and I'm here to bring you your fight picks for the biggest one of the year, at least the biggest one to end the year, UFC 244 taking place in the legendary Madison Square Garden where Jorge Masvidal, Gamebred, is going to be taking on Nate, the West Coast thug, the West Coast gangster Diaz for the BMF title. This is a fun title. It's nothing to do with a weight class. It's just an extra selling point, and I'm hoping it's going to be an amazing fight. We got the whole card crunched top to bottom. I'm ready to get into it. Here's the show. Alright, so I had teased it on my last show, and I gotta call it here, although it is right down the middle. I got some metrics for the loser, and I got some for the winner, and if you listen to the end of my last show, you got the teaser. You got the Game Bread Masvidal teaser. So I am picking Game Bread Masvidal to win this contest. This one is right down the middle, though. I mean, these guys, it's kind of the story that you typically get with a lot of UFC fighters. It's stylistic. It's styles make the fights. And so in this one, Masvidal is obviously going in as the superior striker, and Diaz is going in as the superior grappler. However, Diaz is the kind of guy that will stand and bang. He doesn't necessarily have to move it to the mat. Look what he did with Connor, right? Maybe he tried to bait him, you know, with, after he was knocked down. But for the most part, he wanted to stand and bang. He didn't try to exploit any kind of grappling game, even against Pettis. There wasn't much grappling going on. This guy likes to stand. And I think even though he can take a punch better than anybody else, I think that could be his undoing, right? He's only been knocked out once, but... I think that Masvidal could potentially pick up a win here. I don't know if it's going to be a finish. I don't know if he's going to be able to knock him out. I mean, very few have been able to. Look at Connor knocked him down three times in their second outing, and he could not pick up a KO or TKO in that contest. This guy has not been knocked out since, oh man, we got to go back here. Uh, let's see, we got to go, where is this? Where is this knockout? It's elusive, I got to tell you. He has not been knocked out. Josh Thompson with a head kick back in 2013. This was a long, long time ago, and I don't know if it's going to happen. However, I'm still picking Masvidal here. I think he's the better fighter slightly overall. I think his striking is going to be superior. We saw how Diaz handles technical boxing. I don't know if Masvidal's quite, you know, in that old level of McGregor, you know, where we saw him just looking so crisp, so tight. I don't know if that's you know, he's still that guy necessarily, but I don't really think Masvidal is quite to that level, but I still think, you know, his American top June training, his, you know, exposure to all these high caliber wrestlers and grapplers and strikers trained by Mike Brown, you tie all of that together. And I think you have one really dangerous man, one more complete fighter and somebody who's going to be able to take away the BMF strap uh, and pick up a W here. I think he's going to get the win over Diaz. So I'm calling it in the main event in Madison Square Garden. Jorge Gamebred Masvidal picks up the BMFW. All right, in our next contest, say it ain't so, because I got Kelvin Gaslam defeating Darren Till. This one is a little hard for me. I really like the Scouser. I really like the man from Liverpool. I love the Gorilla, but I got to pick Kelvin Gaslam here. He just has the better stats. Now, I got a little caveat to that that I want to talk about. Let's look at Kelvin Gaslam, though. In his last outing against Israel Adesanya, I mean, look what he did to him versus what Robert Whitaker did to Adesanya. And you can't do MMA math. I don't necessarily want to make that, but look how well he did against him. Look how much of a hurting he put on Adesanya. We saw that Whitaker barely touches Adesanya, whereas Kelvin Gaslam almost knocks him out very early on in the fight by bringing the fight to him right away. And maybe Whitaker was trying to do that too. He was very aggressive, maybe trying to exploit that style that Gaslam used. But I think that Gaslam, you know, because of the high-level opponents he's fought, nearly beat Adesanya, defeated Jacare, and defeated Bisbing uh, back in 2017. He hasn't had a loss, um, you know. Oh, yeah, he did lose to Wyman as well. But uh, sidebar, I think that he's too high a caliber fighter for Till. Now, he's also another guy like Till where he came up because he had trouble making weight at 170. And, you know, 185 has been a good home for him. Will 185 be a good room 
you know, a good place to live for tail. I don't know. A lot of us don't know at this point. We've seen a lot of fighters change weight classes. Sometimes it's really successful. Sometimes they do pretty well. Your Frankie Edgar is going down from 155 to 145. Great move. That was a downward move, but still. Connor going up to 155, you know, maybe not necessarily the, the you know, big breath of information on that one because he only has two fights, but it worked out for him. He did win the title. And, uh, you know, we look at some other guys, though. Uh, look at your Chris Weidman's. Going from one two hundred five to one eighty five, one, sorry one eighty five to two hundred five. Your Luke Rockholds again, same weight class change, and it didn't really work out for them. Is Tal is Till at that point in his career? I don't know, but I want to give a little caveat to Till's information. Look at his fight with Woodley, and look at his loss to Masvidal. So. In that fight with Masvidal, thought he had good hands, knocked him down early. Obviously, he got knocked out. That's, you know, he either hit him or there for this. But he didn't throw a lot of output, right? He was knocked out fairly early in the second round. His fight against Woodley, he almost didn't do anything in the first round. And obviously, he gets put out via submission in the second. So, with that being said, I think that Woodley, sorry, I think that Till's numbers might be a little skewed right now. If we're looking at his information from his Cerrone fight, his Thompson fight, his stats were high, and they've since leveled off. So I don't know, you know, what kind of level Till is working with. Is he going to be the guy when he was fighting Thompson and Cerrone? I think he beat Gaslam at that point. Is he going to be the guy who showed up to fight Woodley? I don't know. And the stats right now are honestly skewed towards a more middle of the road, more you know, middling kind of fighter. And with that being said, I don't know if the stats tell the whole story for Till in this one because he's been so hot and cold. Granted, you know, maybe this is the average of him. Will the average Till beat beat Gaslam? No, I I don't think so. But if we get the Till that showed up, that fought Thompson, that fought Cerrone, I think he makes quick work of Gaslam. That being said, though, I honestly, at the end of the day, got to go with Gastelum on this one. He's just the numbers pick overall. But put that in your back pocket. If anybody wants to take a chance, and he's the underdog right now, take a chance on Till. I wouldn't be against you. In fact, I don't know if I would bet on this fight at all. I don't even know if I would bet on the BMF, to be perfectly honest. That one's down the middle, too. Um, actually, numbers-wise, this one isn't down the middle, but it does have me torn just because I really like Till. I like his style, and I think he's very capable of winning. I just don't know if he will, and that's a big, big question mark. So take that out with a grain of salt. Either way, though, got to pick Gaslam. He's our pick in the co-main. Moving on to our next fight. So we talked about Wonder Boy a moment ago, and uh, he's on this card. Lo and behold, we have Steven Thompson taking on Vicente Luque. So this is going to be a very interesting fight. I think that obviously we have some very, very high-level striking out of Wonderboy, but we also have some great striking, too, out of the Silent Assassin, and he even has some submission game to back it up. The guy has nine, sorry, six submissions over his 17 wins, nine KOs it is, and we look over Wonderboy, he's just the seven KOs and the one submission over his 14 wins. He's very much a counterpuncher. He doesn't like to engage, and so that will be an interesting aspect to this fight. Luke will go after a guy. He's not necessarily going to brawl it out you know I I don't think maybe maybe the Mike Perry fight was a example where he did brawl a little bit uh, but he still came out on top on that one and I think he's going to come out on top again I think that he's well-rounded enough and he's going to be able to be smart enough to stay out of Thompson's you know counter-striking game and when he does bring it it's going to be hard it's going to be fast and it's going to be violent and we've seen Thompson's chin tested a little too much recently with his last knockout of Pettis we don't really know what's going on with his chin right is there a little bit of a button, you know, is he going to be able to hang with a hard shot from Luque? Jury's really out. I'm not really sure. Obviously, we also have Vicente Luque's stock rising, and we have Wonderboy's falling as he ages out. You know, he's coming off, the, obviously, the draw to Woodley, a loss to Woodley, then losses to Till and Pettis. He only has a win against Masvidal back in 2017, and that's because Masvidal wasn't able to deal with his technical striking. I think that Luque can. I think Masvidal could today. I think he's a better fighter today than he was back in 2017. And I got to go with Luque here. I think this is a strong pick here. I really like Vicente Luque, the silent assassin. I think he gets a win over Wonderboy. Uh, that's our pick in this event. All right, moving on to our next fight where we will have... Blagoy Ivanov take on Derek Lewis at heavyweight. So this is a heavyweight contest. I don't want anybody to think that uh, neither, you know, either one of these guys could win. They both swing heavy hands. When we go back and look at Derek Lewis, look at him with his Volkov fight. You know, he was clearly losing that fight, and boom, 
four minutes, 49 seconds, 11 seconds less than the fight. Volkov throws like a meaningless leg kick and he just eats one like a cookie on the chin and he goes down. Now, with that being said, I don't know where Derek Lewis is in his career. He has two good losses to Daniel Cormier and Junior Dos Santos, both being, you know, shut the door style finishes in the second round. Junior Dos Santos via TKO and Cormier uh, via the submission or naked choke. There is one thing in the back, cop, back pocket, though, for uh, the Dos Santos fight. He nearly caught him by kind of fainting an abdominal injury. So, you know, he's actively playing the mind game, and that could be a factor here, but he's going to have to catch him and act to some Oscar award winning acting I think to catch a stone cold killer like Ivanov and I am picking Ivanov in this one I think he just looks really good right now his win over Rothwell his win over Ty Tuivasa and he took Junior Dos Santos to decision which is his only real loss right he came out of the PFL and World Series of Fighting as a very competent fighter ran into JDS as his first UFC contest you know because he had a really high stock and he didn't pick up a win there but I think he's improved you know beating guys like Rothwell and Tuivasa he's found his footing in the UFC and I think I think he can beat a guy in Derek Lewis that seems to be slightly on the decline. Also, Ivanov is a little more well-rounded. Six KO, six submissions over his 18 wins, whereas we know the Black Beast really just gets it done via KO. Now, he does have a super high finish rate. Let's not get around to 18 KOs over his 21 wins and the one submission, but I think that he's a little bit older now. I, I, he's got his hands in a lot of different pots. He he seems to be you know, going into the CBD, cannabis industry. I think he's using fighting as a way to fund that. I think he's going more in the business direction and seeing a different side of his career in the future. And that's just a theory of mine. Take it with a grain of salt. But I think that Ivanov gets the win here. I think that he's going to be the better, more well-rounded fighter. He might even take Lewis down. Look what, you know, Cormier did to Lewis by grinding him out. I think Ivanov can do that here. I think he also can use his striking to set up those takedowns and also has a good chin you know, Ivanov just has the uh, one submission lost and one decision lost in his record. He's never been knocked out. So he's got a really good record going into this, and I think he can get it done. We are picking Blagoy Ivanov in this heavyweight contest. All right, moving into our next contest. We again, this card is stacked. We have one that I'm really looking forward to. This is one of my dark sheep, uh, you know, underdog kind of fights out there that maybe not everybody's watching out for. And it is going to be Kevin Lee taking on Gregor Gillespie. And so this is a fight that I, my knee-jerk reaction, and I think everybody's is, Gillespie's going to win. You know, his wrestling, his dominating style is much like Khabib's, and he's a guy that can just grind you to nothing, right? His striking is also there. Six KOs, five submissions. His ground and pound is there. This is a very well-rounded fighter. This is a fighter that if he kept going, I think could challenge Khabib just because stylistically they're so similar right they could both play their games however Kevin Lee has recently gone to train over at TriStar with Faraz Sahabi one of the best trainers in the world if not the best there's a lot of really good bests out there but let's just say he's one of the best he's gone up there GSP still trains up there still lives up there in Canada and so he's exposed in that environment and he's a fighter that's a little like a GSP a wrestling heavy striker that can put you out in any number of different ways, right? Submissions, knockouts. Granted, he does have more submissions than knockouts, but he's a very, very competent fighter. Is he a GSP like fighter? Yeah, I think he's like stylistically, performance wise. Obviously, we haven't seen that, and that's why I'm a little hesitant to make this call, but I am picking Kevin Lee. Kevin Lee is on the decline right now, right? Great win over Barboza. Nearly beat Tony Ferguson before that. Remember, he had him almost dead to rights. Saved by the bell. It was in Mount on Ferguson. Looking good. Saved by the bell for Ferguson. Ferguson catches him in the triangle. And then, obviously, you know, he had staff. And then the more, you know, the bigger tragedy there is that, you know, uh, his coach takes his life at, after that point. And, and that's, you know, kind of where we see Kevin Lee next, right? Wins against Barboza, but lose to Iaquinta and Dos Anjos, right? And so I think he's been able to refire his career rekindle it up at TriStar and be a guy that can beat a Gillespie. And let me tell you this, this guy can beat Gillespie. He's been talking about it for years, right? I want to fight Khabib. I can see it happening. I can see it. He's called a con or two, but he said Khabib now at this point, right? He's the high man on the totem pole. And I think if he can beat Gillespie, he can go out there. We got somebody for you. We got a guy. We got a guy waiting in the wings. 
We got a Motown phenom that can beat a 155-pound champion. Because if he can beat Gillespie, he can beat Khabib. There's no doubt in my mind. It's a big, big ask of a man to go in and beat a guy like Khabib and Gillespie. But I think that he can do it. And I think he can make a point that Farasa Hobby and TriStar is one of the best gyms in the world. And it was no coincidence that GSP was as good as he was just on his own. He had Faras in his corner. He had TriStar. I think he can do it. The numbers say he can do it. Will he? The question will be answered on Saturday. But I am picking the underdog in this one, Kevin Lee. Maybe your future Motown Phenom 155-pound champion. I'd love to see it happen. Got to start with one win on Saturday. All right, and another one taking place at 205, the light heavyweight division. We have Johnny Walker taking on Corey Anderson. And so in this one, I think it's pretty clear cut that Johnny Walker is going to pick up a win. Uh, There is a little question mark, though, about his shoulder and the way he injured it in the octagon, and is he 100% healthy? I think he is. I honestly think he is. I don't think he'll be affected. And I think he's going to easily dispatch of Corey Anderson. I think that Johnny Walker is on a path right now to collide with either Dominic Reyes or John Jones. My mind, he wins a 244, he calls out Dominic Reyes, and they fight for the t- the chance, not the title, the chance to take on John Jones. Johnny Walker, Dominic Reyes is my future fight that I think happens for us to set up a title shot with the GOAT right now, right? Uh, not to totally underplay Corey Anderson, right? Guy has four KOs over his 12 wins. He does hit hard. Uh, he is a very good fighter, but I think Johnny Walker's fought guys like him before. Look what he did to Misha Serkinov. Look what he did to Justin Day and Khalil Roundtree, right? All of these guys he dispatched in, you know, two minutes at the most, all in the first round, and I think that he's going to do the same thing to Anderson. Anderson could try to take him down. He could try to get some ground and pound. We haven't seen him pushed really hard, but Anderson doesn't seem to have that killer instinct. He doesn't have a stop stoppage to his fight since 2016. You know, he only has the unanimous decision wins over Teixeira, Patrick Cummings, and Ilar Latifi in his last three outings, and he had a loss against Ovin St. Pru in the third round and Jimmy Manawa via KO punch. The guy's got a little bit of a chin. Who's got power on the chin? Guy like Johnny Walker. I think he's going to take another KO victory. Anderson's just been knocked out three times over his career. I think it's going to be a fourth KO loss for him. I'm picking Johnny Walker in this event. In the next contest at Featherweight, we're going to have Shane Hurricane Burgos take on Marquan Armercani. So Armand Connie, great grappling fighter, right? You get the choke on Chris Fishgold. You got a split decision win over Jason Knight. But Shane Burgos just looks so good right now. He's coming off his win over Cub Swanson and Kurt Holoba. And I think he has the potential to put a hurting on a guy like Armand Connie. I don't know if he necessarily can hang with him on the ground. In fact, I don't think he honestly can. But I think his training over at Tiger Schulman, Jimmy Rivera also trains there, is going to emphasize a striking game and a takedown shucking affair. I think he's going to keep himself into high IQ situations where he's going to be able to prevent this thing from ever going to the ground and he's going to be able to exploit Armour Connie's weakness, which is his striking. His emphasis is all on grappling and getting it done there. If he gets it to the mat, I can definitely see him winning. However, I think he's going to have a hard time going there with the Tiger Schulman training camp uh, emphasizing the striking and aggression that we've seen out of his fighters. So I think that Burgos will get a win here. Uh, I don't think, you know, obviously Burgos has his, his one loss against a guy like Calvin Cater to KO. I don't think that's going to happen here. I think he's going to put it on Armarcani early, and I think he's going to be able to shut the door faster than we anticipate. I see Burgos getting a win here, and it's going to be a really good one to make a statement at Featherweight. Pick it Shane Burgos in this event. In the next one, at middleweight, we have Edmund Shabazian, who's just looking like a real phenom right now, taking on Brad Tavares. And in this one, you know, as much as I'd like to see that, you know, think that Tavares has a shot here, I really think that this one is all Shabazian. He's got great wins over Darren Stewart, the dentist. I mean, look at that guy in his last contest, right? He looked phenomenal, super aggressive. Charles Bird and Jack Marshman. And I think he's going to be able to do it again. I think he's going to be able to get a win over Brad Tavares. I think he just looks too athletic right now, too experienced 
explosive. And a guy like Brad Tavares, even though he does hit hard and he moves okay, I don't think he's going to be able to do anything that Shabazian does uh, you know, in a better way. Shabazian is a young 21-year-old phenom right now, and I think he's going to continue to climb that ladder. He's on a Johnny Walker-esque affair. He's putting guys away early, and I think he's going to be able to do it again first or second round against a guy like Tavares, who I think is honestly just a stepping stone to get to the higher echelons of the 185-pound division. Shabazian just looks too good right now. We are picking Edmund Shabazian in this contest. In our next one at heavyweight, we have the legendary Andre the Pitbull Arlovsky taking on a big up-and-comer right now. In fact, it's in his name, Jahirzo Rosenstruck Biggie Boy, a fighter out of Suriname. And I think that the fighter out of Suriname is going to get it done here. We've seen these African fighters just showing amazing athletics in the UFC right now. Explosive, high IQ, willing to work well. Um... I mean, these guys are just phenomenal right now. Look at Usman. Look at guys like Nganu. Um, all of these African-based fighters are, like, hell, even uh, Israel Adesanya, right? Nigeria, obviously, he, he fights out of, out of New Zealand at this point, but he is another African fighter. I think Rosenstruck is part of that wave. People talk about the Daggy Stanny wave, but I think these African nations have a <laughs> probably an even better claim to being the next wave in MMA. And I think Rosenstruck, for the way he hits, for the way we've seen, you know, Arlovsky's chin at this point in his career, I don't think that Arlovsky can win. Does he have that that IQ, that ability to win, ability to exploit a kind of a green fighter like Rosenstruck? Absolutely. But at heavyweight, where they swing so hard, they got lunch boxes, granite hands. I just don't think Arlovsky can eat enough shots to teach this young guy. And he's only he's 31 years old. He's not necessarily really young himself, but teach a younger guy who only has eight fights under his belt. Um, I don't think he's going to be able to eat enough to get in there and teach him that lesson. So in this one, I got to go with Biggie Boy, Jahir, Jarazino, Rosenstruck with the W. In our ladies contest on the evening, we're going to have Kate, Caitlin Shikagian take on Jennifer Maya. And this is a very good contest. So this one could set up who's going to fight Valentina Shevchenko next. I think that uh, maybe Shikagian was going to get that title shot if it hadn't been for her loss against Jessica I. So I think she's back climbing the ladder now. She has wins over Calderwood in her outing and Alexis Davis before that. Obviously, Maya is looking pretty good as well with wins over Alexis Davis and Roxanne Motafari. But I think that Shikagian was just a little off the night and she did lose by split decision Jessica I, I think she's going to get a chance to dance with Valentina. What will happen there? I don't know. But Shkagian looks very good. She, you know, doesn't necessarily have the highest fight IQ, but she's a great point style fighter. Nine decisions over her 12 wins. And I think she's going to be able to move it in that direction against Jennifer Maya. Nothing against Jennifer Maya. I think she's a very well-rounded 125er, but I think Shkagian is just a little more athletic and a little bit better able to pick up points over a three or even five round contest if she found it there. Could either one of them take on Valentina? Doesn't seem likely at this point right now, but who knows? Anything can happen happen but I ultimately see Shkagian picking up the win here calling out Valentina and that's how it ends up playing out we're picking the blonde fighter Caitlin Shkagian in this contest all right in our next one we have a Tiger Schulman fighter again in Lyman the cyborg good taking on Chance Rencounter the Black Eagle the Native American fighter fighting out of Alliance and so this is a very good fight uh, this one is very difficult to call in all seriousness Lyman good looks really good right now right he had a loss to Damian Maya back in February but hey who isn't getting choked up by Damian Maya these days I say it all the time ask Aspirin for that good wins over Ben Saunders Andrew Craig did get a split decision loss a little thrown off by Elizo Dos Santos but he's looking very very good at the moment Chance Rencounter also looking phenomenal as well you know he's a guy that can grapple that can strike he can really do it anywhere it needs to be done and both of these guys have that ultimately though I think I gotta go with Lyman Good here the cyborg this is a, a close contest you know I, I don't always like Rencounter I don't like the way he necessarily wins I think his fight IQ isn't as high as somebody like Good's uh, I think Good is just getting it done in a better fashion. The guy hasn't had a decision since 2013. He's shutting the door or having the door shut on him. He's going for it. Whereas when I look over at Ren Counter, you know, he's you know he's getting submissions, but he's also getting decisions. 
and I, I don't think this thing's going to go to the ground necessarily. I think these guys are going to try to keep it standing, especially Lyman Good, and I think that ultimately Good is going to be able to pick up the W here. So we are picking the Cyborg Lyman Good in this contest. Now to round things out, we got one more fight to go over, and it's, it's still an amazing one. Hakeem Dawadu and Julio Ars. Both of these fighters are looking really good right now, and I am very excited to make this call on this one. Again, a Tiger Schulman fighter or in Julio Ars taking on Mean Hakeem Dawadu. But I think Mean Hakeem is looking too good these days to honestly have, you know, be a challenge, uh, or sorry, to have a challenge from anyone, especially these lower end weight classes. I think that his kicking style, I think that his punching style of striking is just going to outclass a guy like Ars. I think he's going to out aggression him. Um, Julio Ars maybe has a chance if he can get this to the mat. We have no actual submission victories out of Dawadu. He's definitely a striker that likes to keep it standing, and I think he will be able to do that. Bear in mind that Dawadu also has a 12-0 Muay Thai kickboxing record, and I think that is also going to be difficult for a guy like Ars to deal with. Ars does like to engage a little bit on the feet, and I think he might find himself outclassed in this one. Having to try to force it to the ground could be a problem, and I don't think he's going to be able to get a win. I ultimately got to go with Dawadu here in this contest. So let's go over them one more time. We got Masvidal, Gastelum, Luke, Ivanov, Lee, Walker, Burgos, Shabazian, Roisenstruck, Shikagian, Good, and Dawadu to close it out. These are all phenomenal contests. I mean, top to bottom, even this last fight here, Julio R. Sakim Dawadu, this fight could be on, you know, kind of a, a main card fight night for sure. I mean, not, you know, not the main, main event, but definitely main card for sure. And it's just looking so good. Also, in other news, apparently The Rock on Friday is going to announce some kind of MMA news. I don't know what that means exactly, uh, but we'll find out. Uh, he is going to be the one presenting the BMF title. Uh, which is interesting. I, I'm kind of torn. You're just my personal feelings. I'm just kind of torn. Like I, I love that they're you know they're giving guys like Diaz and Mazda, especially Diaz, like a platform to win a title. Even if it's meaningless, you know he's getting a push behind the company. I think that's great. But at the same time, it's getting a little gimmicky. You know, I don't need The Rock to hand up the title. Can't they just give it out like normal? Can it just be some kind of one-off thing? And I don't know. It just makes the game a little gimmicky. It'd be like if they let, you know, Ninja, the Twitch streamer for Fortnite, give out, you know, like the Super Bowl trophy at the next Super Bowl or some crap like that. Or or like, uh, you know, they, they made up a football game for the, the losers of both NFC and AFC divisions so they could have like a, a second or, sorry, third place finisher to the Super Bowl. I, I don't know. It, it just seems weird that they're doing this in general. This fight didn't need a title, didn't need a gimmick. I'm happy the guys are getting one, though. I'm happy they're, you know, maybe getting paid a little more. Maybe they get pay-per-view points because it's some kind of title situation. So I think, like, all of the good things about it are good for the fighters. And from a casual perspective or even a deep-seated, you know, lover of the sport perspective, I just think it's a little gimmicky and, and I'm ultimately torn about it so uh if they're getting theirs that's all that matters we're getting a good fight and i can't complain too much after that right so uh, anyways we'll be back with the retrospective it's probably going to be sunday morning I don't, I don't see myself recording the uh you know retrospective at 1 a.m after uh, kicking people out from watching the fights now nah, actually anybody uh listen to this who does come by uh, nobody's ever kicked out hell you can sleep on the couch if you need to but uh anyway it's a little sidebar I hope to have everybody buy for that one, uh, which is uh, probably not something I need to advertise in the podcast, but whatever. <laughs> Anyways, all right, so we'll be back with that retrospective soon. I'm feeling really good about these numbers. I know I say that all the time, but I'm feeling good about them. And uh, let's just keep on the winning ways and, and hope that things go our way on that evening. So until I speak with you again next time, happy fight picking.